Hello and welcome to the interface video. Um, in this tutorial, you will learn how to build the interface for your clock. Um, so the first question you got to ask yourself is, what is an interface? Well, if you don't know, it's an engineering term that means the part of a machine that the user looks at or interacts with. So the interface of a clock would be simply the numbers that tell you what time it is. The interface on a hot stove would be uh, where you turn it on, set the heat, and the burner itself. The interface of a computer would be a keyboard, a mouse, the things on the web page. And the interface of a soda can would be the little tab where you go and open the soda can. So all machines have an interface, and it's simply what the user touches and looks at. So let's take a closer look at the interface of this clock that we're going to build. As you see here, we have a ones column, a tens column, and an hours column. We have a colon in the middle because it's uh, synonymous with clocks. And the ones column is in base 10. It will, that meaning it will regroup to the, uh, the tens column when it hits the 10th block here. The tens column is base 6 or base 6D to be exact because when it hits 60 or the 6th block, it will regroup to the hours column. And the hours column will be base 12. So actually when it hits the 13th block, it will regroup into 1 o'clock. Um, let's get started on building the interface. So first thing you're going to need to do, build the minutes. So there's the ones column, the tens column. Here's the colon for the clock and the hours column. Now to make it easy for the user to understand, maybe label ones, tens, and hours. All right, you got the interface built. Now for the most important part, the coordinates. And here's your teamwork challenge. Get the coordinates to your teammates as fast as you can and tell them what an interface is. So complete your teammate challenge as soon as you're done with this, uh, this part. Okay, so the coordinates on the one part, you're going to need to know um, how to move sand around here. So you're going to stand directly on the sand, and you're going to write down the coordinates on the upper left-hand corner of your screen on a piece of paper. Yes, you have to write it on a piece of paper. These are super-duper important, um, and your teammates need these. So negative 9, 4, and negative 63. The ones column is in base 10, so it switches on the 10th block. So now you're going to make a stack 10 tall. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now you're going to check it. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Boom, you measured it. It's 10 tall. Break the top block because this is where the last sand is going to fall. Boom. And that's a very important coordinate. Write down, write it down. Negative 9. 13, negative 63. That's so important because when a sand block hits here, it's going to tell the machine to clear this out and to, and to put a new block in the tens column. Now let's get the chords for our tens column. Stand on your tens block, write it down. Negative 9, 4, negative 61. Question, look at your numbers. What do you notice that's similar? Okay, now the tens column switches at 60, so go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Good. Break that top one because uh, it's going to land and switch it on 60 and write down the coordinates. Negative 9, 9, negative 61. Now go to the hour column. And the hour switches at 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Check it with a measurement because 12 is kind of a big one. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Now 12 o'clock will say 12, so it's actually going to need to regroup on top. So you're not going to need to break this top one. So stand it on it and get your coordinates. Negative 9, 
16, negative, 50, negative 57. Now you notice I didn't check the coordinate here down at the bottom. That's because I want you to look at your numbers and see if you can figure that one out on your own by looking at the patterns that the numbers give you. Try it out, and if you don't know, I'll tell you anyway. It's negative 9, 4, 57. Okay, get these coordinates over to your, uh, your people, and then design the backdrop, which is um, what goes behind this stuff, and that's where you get to use your artistic talents. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Now go build that clock.